bless you, Sarah here. God gave me Haggai a couple of days ago and the more I listened to it, the more I felt that I was to create a video to share this message with you. What I'm going to do is read from Haggai WAB version, World English Bible version and unpack that with Holy Spirit. The context of Haggai is that Yahweh spoke to Haggai and gave a message for the people in Israel saying to them that you know their their houses are being taken care of but what about God's house what about God's temple um, and it goes through discussing how the remnant set about to rebuild the temple and that they they will be rewarded for their efforts So as you listen to this video, as you listen to Haggai, I encourage you to, to sit with God and, and let him speak to you in this context of the modern age where we are being called, the, the remnant is being called to rebuild God's temple and that temple is inside of us and Holy Spirit comes to, to roost and reside within us. And not only is this about rebuilding the temple that we are as individuals, but it's about the remnant being busy about the Father's business building the temple as a whole as a community of believers and I believe that in this time God is doing that through creative pursuits just as he's having me release worship songs that were authored with Holy Spirit's leading just as he has me produce artwork with Holy Spirit's leading there are members of my ministry who are releasing books and poetry and there are all these creative pursuits that I believe God will use to activate and enhance people's walk with him and help them to open their hearts to Holy Spirit so that God can enter in and reside into them as the modern day temple. Begin the reading here, Haggai 1. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, This is what Yahweh of armies says. These people say, the time hasn't yet come, the time for Yahweh's house to be built. Then Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your panelled houses while this house lies waste? Yahweh of armies says 
consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you aren't filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put them into a bag with holes in it. Go up to the mountain, bring wood, and build the house. I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, says Yahweh. You looked for much, and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? says Yahweh of armies. Because of my house that lies waste, while each of you is busy with his own house, sake the heavens withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed Yahweh, their God's voice, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as Yahweh their God had sent him. And the people feared Yahweh. Yahweh's messenger spoke Yahweh's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says Yahweh. <music> Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. In the twenty-fourth day of the month, in the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. In the 
seventh month, in the twenty-first day of the month, Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Jehozadak the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Isn't it in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says Yahweh. strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, says Yahweh, and work, for I am with you, says Yahweh of armies. is the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt and my spirit lived among you. Don't be afraid, for this is what Yahweh of armies says. Yet once more, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. shake all nations. Treasure of all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says Yahweh of armies. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says Yahweh of armies. The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says Yahweh of armies. I will give peace, says Yahweh of armies. month in the second year of Darius, Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Yahweh of armies says, Ask now the priests concerning the law, saying, If someone carries holy meat in the fold of his garment, and with his fold touches bread, stew, wine, oil, or any food, will it become holy? The 
priests answered, No. Then Haggai said, If one who is unclean by reason of a dead body touch any of these, will it be unclean? The priests answered, It will be unclean. So is this people, and so is this nation before me, says Yahweh. And so is every work of their hands. That which they offer there is unclean. before a stone was laid on a stone in Yahweh's temple. Through all that time, when one came to a heap of twenty measures, there were only ten. When one came to the wine vat to draw out fifty, there were only twenty. says Yahweh. Consider, please, from this day and backward, from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, since the day that the foundation of Yahweh's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yes, the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate and the olive tree haven't produced. twenty-fourth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. kingdoms of the nations. Overthrow. 
overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. and their riders will come down, every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says Yahweh of armies, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, says Yahweh, and will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, says Yahweh of armies. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. prophetic now message for the remnant. The people say the time hasn't yet come, the time for Yahweh's house to be built. Now this is a direct reference to people not being ready for the coming of Jesus, people not even being ready for Holy Spirit, how many different doctrines speak about Holy Spirit but don't have experience of Holy Spirit ministering to individuals. I won't go into descriptions of all the different doctrines out there, the false theologies, but God gave us Holy Spirit to minister to us individually, directly. We are to be filled with Holy Spirit so that every part of our being had sensitivity to God and God's movement in our lives. But the number of people on this planet who have awareness, let alone experience of that, is absolutely minimum. for you yourselves to dwell in your panelled houses while this house lays waste. Many, many people who claim to follow Christ, people who call themselves Christians, are building their own little empires. God's reminding me of a dream that was interpreted by John Paul Jackson quite a few years ago and he described The vision was church leaders represented as men sitting in ponds. They, they had their own, you know, they were big fish in a little fish pond and they were sitting there in their ponds and God was calling them and they would prefer, they took off their signet rings, they preferred to take off their covenant relationship with God and stay with their own personal empires, these little fish ponds that they were big fish in, rather than to humble themselves and to stay in covenant with God. And we are starting to see exposure of this, the church leaders, and we're starting to get that, that exposure, this revelation that they aren't about God, they are not about supporting others to come into relationship with God. 
they are only about building their own empires. They are about self-interest. Consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. There's several, level, several layers to this. One is at the personal level where we can have a look at our lives before we gave our lives as a living sacrifice to God, before we chose to seek God and be obedient, before we became laid down lovers of Jesus and became agreeable to following God wherever he led us and giving up everything in obedience to God, whatever it took to be able to go where Jesus leads us. Before we reach that point, and really it's a point of faith, we were doing things in our own strength. We were analysing and anticipating how life would play out in our own strength. And God was not a part of that picture. Over the years, we've come to learn that God is sovereign and that we are best to trust him, be guided by him and know that whatever happens, so long as we are in alignment with God's will, it can only be good. Everything that happens in our lives is worth celebrating before it even happens because God will use it for good. There was no satisfaction for us in that time because true satisfaction and fulfilment only comes through partnership with God. Another layer though to this scripture, you have sown much and bring in little, also speaks of these churches that maintain a lukewarm congregation. There is no growth as individuals spiritually through those churches and there is no growth for the kingdom in those churches. Now sad to say there are some wonderful churches out there where this is still the case. There are those churches where we don't have relationship with God and we go along on Sunday and tick that box and think that that's all that's required. But there are the lukewarm churches that are like a trap for those more spiritually mature people who have their own ministries and yet they feel that they need to attend a church to be right with God and they're attending churches where Holy Spirit is there but Jezebel is allowed in those churches and she keeps the congregation stagnant. Rather than engaging with the congregation for the furtherment of their individual ministries. Jezebel's preaching from the pulpit and she preaches the same messages over and over because just as a child who's on a screen all day isn't benefiting from all the natural aspects that a child needs to experience from life to grow, a congregation that is listening to a preacher preaching the same message over again is not, is not catching the messages that they need for their personal growth and the growth of the kingdom. It's a bit like filler in a sausage or a meat patty. As the price of things goes up, we're seeing more filler, more different 
types of starches and fibres and less and less meat in our sausages and our meat patties. And, you know, we think we're getting meat, we think we're getting a sausage, we think we're getting a burger, but it's not. What we're getting is fibre. It's just, it's just filling. And this is what it's like when we go to a church and we are not we're not being edified we're not being raised up it's a placeholder nothing more and what is really wicked about this is that it steals our time This is the only interpretation of this scripture for this day. I encourage you, if you receive your own revelation, to share that in the comments below. Therefore, for your sake, the heavens withhold the dew and the earth withholds its fruit. I called for a drought on the land, on the mountains, on the grain, on the new wine, on the oil, on that which the ground produces, on men, on livestock, and on all the labour of the hands. Now these are all things that are coming to pass, and we see shortages, and we see prices going up, and I believe that we are going to see a lot worse before God is done. Haggai, Yahweh's messenger, spoke Yahweh's message to the people, saying, I am with you. Four little words. I take two meanings from this in this season. One of those is that Holy Spirit is with us and in us. And this is a time of co-creation. This is a time of co-creativity. This is a time when we, to be in alignment with God, are to be producing fruit for the kingdom. Fruit that has Holy Spirit DNA in it fruit that shines with God's glory. Sit down and create with God just because you can't write or draw or make music in your own strength. Sit down with God and say to him, how do you want me to co-create with you? What tools do you wish for me to use? What words do you wish for me to share? What's the message you want me to take to the people? create with God. We must not be critical of God's creation and when you submit entirely to God and let Holy Spirit create with you using what is within you and God is revealing 
new gifts in this season. You must not judge and criticise that which is created by and with God. I am with you, says Yahweh. There are those of us who are going through trials and adversity and this is another level of the the meaning of this in Haggai for us in this season is that God is with us so who can be against us no weapon against us can possibly prosper we are called anointed and appointed God has work for us to do and he will provide protection for us while we build the temple. Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of Yahweh of armies, their God. stirring up the spirit of the leadership of the remnant who are established but he is also stirring up the spirit of the remnant who have not yet wakened to the fullness of their calling to the fullness of their anointing I think of a friend who visited recently and she did some art while we were in the prayer room in this village and It was the first time she'd drawn like that and Holy Spirit used that space and that timing to anoint her and she is creating incredible art that God will use for kingdom purposes. What is God calling you to and who is God calling you to? Is God calling you to start a ministry? Is God calling you to produce songs? Is God calling you to minister within a school setting? Is he asking you to minister within your community, to go and speak to people in aged care homes? There are so many ways this could look different, but Mark my words, God is calling you to a people. their God. What is your focus? Is your focus building a house for yourself? Maybe you have family members putting pressure on you. Or is your focus on obedience to God? Is your focus on sowing into the kingdom, creating with God, getting the media, the fruit out there that will touch lives and bring in the harvest of souls. Because when you seek first the kingdom, 
everything else will follow rather than putting your income first and prioritizing bringing income in ask God where does he want to place you what tool does he want to put what instrument does he want to put in your hand and as you trust God to provide for you while you develop your skills for kingdom purposes you will eventually see the fruit of that investment not only will you provide will not only will God provide but the day will come where you prosper Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? Go back and research past revivals, because we are coming into the revival of all revivals. I'm not saying to copycat what people did in those revivals, but it's important for us to know what revival looks like. It's important for us to know what anointing looks like on music, on art, on people. It's important for us to know what God's glory looks like on a community and what an anointing looks like on a community of followers. How do you see this house now? Isn't it in your eyes as nothing? sense of grief as I read that phrasing isn't it in your eyes as nothing I believe that many of us have the vision and we have how do I describe this a feeling in our heart such a yearning to build the kingdom of God and to just see so many souls in partnership with God we can see what a beautiful world that can be when when everybody's working in harmony I feel like I'm writing a song here <laughs> I think it might be a song that's already been been written thank you to the, to the Beatles we can see the emptiness in the temples we can see the emptiness we look through the windows of the soul and see so many temples are empty they are filled with nothing a void a void of emptiness yet now be strong be strong all you people of the land and work for I am with you
This is the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit lived among you. By acknowledging Jesus as our Saviour, we entered into the new covenant with God. He took us out of the bondage of the world and its ways and its values. And he gave us Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Don't be afraid. Yet once more it is a little while and I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations. The treasure of all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory. Do not be afraid. You're in relationship with God. Holy Spirit is guiding you. I know many of you go through these times when you think that you must have done something wrong, that God's not speaking to you. That's not the case. <laughs> that is so not the case. It's just that there's nothing that he needs to say to you in that moment. But when the time is right, you will be sensitive to his leading. And if he needs you to hear him, he will speak loud and clear and you will know his voice. There is more shaking to come. I've said it all along. COVID was not the entirety of the shaking. It was just the beginning. There is so much more shaking yet to come. But we need not be afraid because God is with us. We seek him. We're obedient with him. We're in alignment with God's will. And so he's positioning us in these little havens in the midst of the storm. And we experience the eye of the storm where there is peace. There is tranquility. There is serenity. Now, if ever there was a theme for a season, what God is giving me currently is that word serenity. So capture that word serenity, make it a prayer point and receive it. No matter what things may look like in the natural, no matter the cycles that you have come to preempt, whether they be seasonal cycles, as in spring following winter, or seasons of your life, God can do something different. Treasure of all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. During the housing bubble in the United States of America, there were those who lost out financially, found themselves in houses that they had debts on that were so much greater than the value of the house. And that was those people going through their own personal tribulation. It was an opportunity for them to get on their knees and submit to God and cry out to God.
but those who were in alignment with God's will prospered during that time because their experience was that despite not having a lot of money in their hand, houses were suddenly incredibly, ridiculously affordable. what I'm doing you thought you couldn't make it but I am leveling the playing field and he is putting weapons in our hands that are going to take out the enemy glory of this house will be greater than the former and in this place I will give peace God is bringing provision he's restoring promises and he has invested heavily all those trials burdens adversity, tribulation, the betrayals, the abuses, the neglect. That was a massive investment from God. Can you imagine him standing there and Jesus, tears streaming down his face while he watched us go through what we went through, but all the time knowing that what did not kill us would make us stronger. Do you know with swords, the the longer the process of, of um, how do I put this, let's just say creation, the forging, the longer it takes, the more valuable that sword. And so it is in the kingdom of God. Those people who don't go through much firing, don't go through much adversity, the ways they can be used by God are not that many. When God leads us through that firing process, when the enemy is permitted to attack from all angles, all directions, when the heat is turned up and we reach the end of ourselves, when we learn to stop looking in our own bag for an escape mechanism, when we learn to submit and give it all to God and turn to Him at the first sign of trouble, He can use us and there is no limit on the ways He can apply us in the kingdom. God wants us to think back to our former lives before we understood who he was, before we understood our identity in him. And he wants us to acknowledge that things were not working out that great for us back then. But he came along and he cleansed us, he purified us and he prepared us. today I will bless you what you put your hand to for kingdom purposes will prosper I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them 
the horses and their riders will come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. Judgment is coming upon the nations and judgment is coming upon the churches. He speaks of overthrowing, king, overthrowing the thrones of kingdoms. Everything is up for grabs in this season. Nothing, nothing will remain untouched by God's hand in this season of breakthrough for the kingdom of Christ. God says he will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations many of them will find that their economies no longer prosper, that their economies are crumbling and so with it their power over others. He says, I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. And I feel that God is speaking of the ministries, the churches that have done wrong by God and done wrong by their congregations. Not only will he overthrow the leadership but he will overthrow their yes men, the Ahabs, those people who never stood up to Jezebel, who allowed Jezebel to stride around the Lord's house as if it was hers. I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you. God has put his mark on you. He will make you recognisable. People will see without a doubt that you are a remnant, that you are called by God, that God's hand is on everything that you do. There will be no doubt that you are called and you are chosen.
Holy Father, I pray that you give the listeners of this video the eyes to see and the ears to hear your message in Haggai. I thank you for putting this video before those you intend to receive it. In Jesus' name, Amen. there is a QR code on the screen that you can use or you can use a link in the description box below this video. Take every word before the Lord for confirmation. Prophetic words are not a guarantee of future events. Prophetic words are not to be taken literally. God bless you. Mm -hmm.